The horrors of war are often forgotten, but one massacre, in particular, stands out in history as a reminder of the atrocities that can be committed in times of conflict. We're talking about the Nanking Massacre, an event so brutal that it has been nicknamed the Rape of Nanking. This is a heart-wrenching and sobering topic, but it's crucial that we educate ourselves about these events. However, amidst the darkness and despair, there were also moments of hope and courage. The bravery of the Chinese people and the efforts of foreigners to save lives in Nanking are truly inspiring. Hello and welcome to Pure History. Today, we'll dive into a dark chapter of human history, the Nanking Massacre. And before we start, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. The year was 1937, and tensions were high between the Republic of China and the Empire of Japan. The two countries were locked in a conflict known as the Second Sino-Japanese War. Japan wanted to grow its empire and take over more land in Asia, which led to the war. China, on the other hand, was determined to protect its sovereignty and independence. The Chinese nationalist leaders were afraid and didn't know what to do as they planned the attack on Nanking. At the start of World War II, the Japanese had just won a big victory in the Second Sino-Japanese War in Shanghai. With their sights set on the capital city of Nanking, the Chinese nationalist leader Chiang Kai-shek faced a difficult decision. You can feel that Chiang was afraid of losing his army in battle, so he sent most of the official Chinese troops out of the city. This left Nanking open to attack by the enemy. You will agree with me that this was a controversial decision because it left the people of the city with no way to defend themselves against the coming invasion. Despite this, Chang ordered the city to be held at all costs and that there be no official evacuation of its residents. However, many people disregarded this order and fled the city in an attempt to save themselves. Those who stayed in Nanking were left defenseless and open to the horrors of the Japanese invasion. The Nanking Massacre was terrible because the nationalist leaders weren't ready and gave different orders. It is a reminder of what can happen when you don't make a decision or act when there is a conflict. During the Nanking Massacre in 1937, a group of Western merchants and missionaries set up the International Committee for the Nanking Safety Zone. Their goal was to give civilians a safe place to stay. The safety zone covered a limited area of the city and consisted of over a dozen small refugee camps. It was made official in November 1937, and it was about the same size as Central Park in New York. The Chinese government pulled out of Nanking on December 1st, leaving the International Committee in charge of running the city. People who were still living in the city had to go to the designated safety zone to stay safe. The safety zone was set up to create a neutral area in the city where civilians could be safe from harm and violence during the war. On December 13, 1937, the Japanese army descended upon the city of Nanking, which was then the capital of the Republic of China. General Masusi Awani led a force of Japanese soldiers into Nanking as part of the Central China Front Army. People in China were looking forward to and afraid of the Japanese soldiers' arrival because they had heard stories about how cruel and violent they were. As soon as they got into the city, the Japanese soldiers killed a lot of people and buried thousands of Chinese soldiers in mass graves. Many Japanese soldiers were said to be motivated by hunger, fatigue from weeks of marching and intense fighting, and a lack of discipline. Reports from people who were there and later research suggested that between 20,000 and 80,000 people, including women and girls of all ages, were brutally raped and tortured in horrible ways. Can you imagine in what ways this invasion could ruin your life? Maybe it's for the best that things just stop here but that wasn't the end of it. Even though the Japanese soldiers said at first that they would protect the Nanking safety zone, they still attacked and invaded the area. This kept the violence going on even after the city declared order in January 1938. The safety zone was eventually destroyed and the city was ruled by a puppet government until the end of World War II. The impact of the violence was devastating as tens of thousands of women were raped and entire families were wiped out. The elderly and young children were among those that were killed. The violence left bodies all over the streets for months, and the Japanese destroyed or stole much of the city's infrastructure in an attempt to erase the city's history. Let us see in detail how much damage was actually done. 
The Nanking Massacre is still a haunting reminder of how terrible war is and how badly innocent civilians can be treated. The horrible things that the Japanese soldiers did during this time will always be remembered by the people of Nanking and the rest of the world. Most people agree that the event was one of the most violent acts against civilians in the 20th century. The exact number of casualties from the Nanking Massacre remains unknown, but estimates suggest that it's anywhere from 200,000 to 300,000 people were killed. The massacre had a big effect on how China and Japan got along with each other, and tensions between the two countries have stayed high ever since. After World War II was over, the International Military Tribunal for the Far East was set up to try those who committed war crimes during the war. Among the accused were General Matsu Awani and Lieutenant General Tani Haiseo, who had played key roles in the Nanking Massacre. During the trial, it became clear that both Matsu and Haiseo were to blame for many killings, rapes, and thefts that Japanese soldiers did during Nanking. Eyewitness accounts, photos, and other kinds of proof were used to show how big and bad the crimes the Japanese did were. After a thorough investigation and trial, the International Military Tribunal for the Far East found Matsui and Hasao guilty of war crimes and sentenced them to death. In the history of international justice, the verdict was a big deal because it was one of the first times that high-ranking military officials were held responsible for horrible things they did during the war. The verdict sent a message that such acts of violence would not be tolerated and that those who committed them would face consequences. It also served as a reminder that even in times of war, it is important to uphold the values of human dignity and respect for human rights. In this way, the verdict helped lay the foundation for future efforts to prevent similar atrocities from happening in the future. Did you know that there is a hall named the Nanking Massacre Memorial Hall? The Memorial Hall was built to remember the people who died in the massacre and to keep a historical record of what happened. A memory of the World Register, which is run by UNESCO, has said that the records from the Memorial Hall are an important part of world history and heritage. The Nanking Massacre legacy is a strong reminder of how terrible war can be and how important it is to work for peace, justice, and respect for human rights. The international community must work to make sure that violent acts like the Nanking Massacre never happen again and that the people who died are remembered and respected. The events of the Nanking Massacre should never be forgotten, and they should always serve as a reminder of how important it is to work for a more fair and peaceful world. Memorials to the Nanking Massacre serve as an important reminder of the tragedy that took place in the city in 1937 and commemorate the victims who lost their lives. These memorials are all over China and other parts of the world. They come in many different forms, such as monuments, museums, and memorial parks. The monuments often feature sculptures or other works of art, are designed to commemorate the victims and pay homage to their memories. Most of the time, these monuments are put in public places like parks or city squares. They serve as a constant reminder of the massacre and how it affected people. On the other hand, the museums about the Nanking Massacre give a more in-depth look at the events of the massacre, including what led to it, what the Japanese soldiers did, and how it affected the local people. These museums try to teach people about the massacre and how it changed the city and its people through exhibits and displays. Memorial parks, on the other hand, are quiet places where people can think about the massacre and pay their respects to the people who died. These parks often feature memorials, gardens, and other areas of natural beauty and serve as places of solace and reflection. That was today's video, but we have more interesting videos for you. 